The first part of adding the categories to the front end of our site is creating the template. And fortunately, we did that earlier when we were setting up our category group. We have our template in the templates directory, in a styles directory, and then using underscore entry dot twig. And what this template is going to do is provide a listing of all of the entries in a category. So we'll be at a specific category. In our static templates, we can see that if you go to styles and then index.html, and you can see this is the name of the category. And then we can also put in a description. And then I have two tables here, one for drinks and one for recipes. And then we'll iterate over all entries that are categorized as espresso and list them here. And that way someone can come to craftycoffee.com slash style slash espresso and see all of the drinks and recipes categorized under espresso. So it's another angle at getting to the content. So let's build this. So in our template, the first thing we're going to do is our extends and then we'll extend our layouts slash main and then define our block and then we'll grab our static markup to put in here as a starting point. So that is going to be in styles index.html in the static files that you download. And we'll start at breadcrumbs as we usually do and go down until you get right before the footer row. Copy that and then drop it in and save it. Now let's validate our work to make sure this is looking okay. So on the front end, if I go to slash styles slash espresso, you should get something like this, which is that template. It's just now being generated by craft and served up by craft and twig. Now this right here, styles and then slash slug is what we set in our category group. So craft knows when this is called with this being the slug and that being the segment of the URL, it knows to call this styles entry template and then because we're using a slug right here that is a valid category, it pulls in then that category data. Now, because we defined this URI as being a category page, Craft gives us some category data automatically, and it's available to us using the category object. We can access it and its properties or the fields easily like this. So category title, I can add here in the breadcrumb. So I just do curly braces and then category dot title. If we reload up here, you'll see it right there. So I can add it here as well. It would be the same bit of code right there, category dot title, and we get that automatically. Now we can also access the category description, which we can place here in a P tag and just do category dot style description we we'll reload that. You can see there it is. Probably need to style that a little bit better to match the others. If I go into my about page here, here we go. It needs tagline reverse class here. So we'll grab that, drop it in here, reload, perfect. So now we have a description for each of the categories. Okay, so now I want to list out the entries that have the category assigned for both the drinks section and the recipes section. So to do that, just need to navigate a little bit of code here. So we have this first one, which is our drinks. So these are the drink entries. And then for that, I'm going to iterate over the table rows. This is the header here, so we can leave that. And we're just going to do a for loop. So we'll say for drink in. And now we need to do a element query. Craft.entries.section drinks. And now we need to say, hey, it has to be related to this category that we're looking at. So related to category, which is this category object. And we'll do an end for right here. And then inside of here, let's, let's get rid of these other rows here. We don't need, those are extra. And then inside of here, we'll do drink.title and then drink.url. 
in an entry template, we would do drink dot or entry dot URL. But since we're referring to this as drink, we're going to do it called drink. And this is added to the menu. We don't have anything like that. So I might just do drink dot entry date, I think is what it's called. And then we will filter that with date, month, year. Let's see if that works. So we'll reload. There we go. So add it to menu, February 2020, and the drink name. If I click on the drink, it should bring me right to the perfect espresso drink right there. All right, let's do the same for recipes. So we'll go down here. Again, same thing, recipes. And this is the recipes entries right here. So we'll iterate over this one. So we'll say for recipe in craft.entries.section recipes related to category and then dot all. I think I might've forgotten dot all up here. I'm sure you were yelling at me for that. There we go, fix that. And then we'll get rid of our extras and end our for loop and then populate this with recipe.title and recipe.url. And then for this one, we'll just use the same thing again, added to the menu. We don't have a field for that. We might want to create one though. It would be recipe entry date right there. Let's check that. Reload. There it is. Same thing. It looks the same, but it's actually going to the recipe instead. If I click on that. It'll go right over to the recipe. And now we are listing all of the entries in both drinks and recipe section that have espresso as the category. So if I went into my entries and let's say that one of these other drinks like the iced coffee, let's say it was uh, an iced Americano. I'm going to label it as espresso. We'll just say iced Americano, just so it fits with the drink style. We'll save that. Go back to the site reload, and now you can see it added another drink here automatically. It's kind of cool how that's sitting on the glass, right? All right, so that is how we then code up our listing page that shows all of the entries under a category, just like that.